Hello, welcome to a session of Limerence Anonymous, my own 12-step program to recover from limerence. Analysis of Step 1. We admitted we were powerless over limerence, that our lives had become unmanageable. I'm Carol and I suffer from limerence. Understanding limerence. Limerence is a term coined by psychologist Dorothy Tenev in the 1970s to describe an intense, involuntary, romantic attraction characterized by obsessive thoughts and feelings about another person. It often includes a longing for emotional reciprocation and can lead to significant distress when those feelings are not returned. Understanding limerence is crucial for individuals who feel overwhelmed by their emotions and behaviors related to it. This is from www.iask.ai. I want to thank AI. It does do good things sometimes, you guys. We've got to be careful with it, but it does do good things. I asked a question. I asked it to help me write my uh, book, Limerence Anonymous. Some of the ideas are my own. Um, I want to write about step one. And I'm also going to be sharing about my experience, strength, and hope, and also giving samples from AI of what experience, strength, and hope in recovery from limerence looks like. I also encourage you guys to come to my channel and uh, share your experience, strength, and hope or your experience with limerence. I'll keep the comments open, stay on topic. I reserve the right as any influencer to uh, moderate. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Admitting powerlessness. The first step in many recovery programs, including those inspired by Alcoholics Anonymous, emphasizes the importance of admitting powerlessness over the addiction or behavior in question. In this context, acknowledging powerlessness over limerence means recognizing that one cannot control their feelings or the outcomes of, the, of their romantic pursuits. This admission is essential as it allows individuals to confront the reality of their situation without denial or minimization. Often when I am around my limerent person, I feel like a whole other person, like I can't function, like I freeze, like I'm paralyzed with feelings and uh, overwhelm. And um, self-reflection. Individuals must engage in self-reflection to identify how limerence has affected their lives. This could involve journaling about experiences, discussing feelings with trusted friends, or their Limerence Anonymous meeting. Hopefully we'll be starting one up shortly, maybe on Zoom. Seeking professional help. Yes, we can seek outside help. That's okay. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Two, behavioral patterns. Recognizing patterns of behavior associated with Limerence is vital. This may include obsessively checking social media profiles of the object of affection, neglecting responsibilities, or experiencing emotional highs and lows based on interactions with the other person. I had to turn my phone off today so I wouldn't keep checking it. And I did check it just once because I wanted to see if I got other calls. She didn't call. Mm. Yeah, I, I did react emotionally, but I'm working on it. I ha I got it. Instead, I got up and made this video. Okay, number three. Impact on daily life. Yes. Impact on daily life. It will affect you. Um, acknowledging how limerence has made life unmanageable involves assessing its impact on various aspects such as work, relationships, mental health, and overall well-being. For instance, someone might find themselves unable to focus at work or anywhere else due to constant daydreaming about their crush. Yeah. It can also affect your sleep. Unmanageability. The second part of step one highlights that lives have become unmanageable due to limerence. This concept can be broken down into several components. One, emotional distress. The emotional turmoil caused by unreciprocated feelings can lead to anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. Individuals may experience mood swings based on perceived signals from the object of their affection. Yes, as, as she goes up and down, so do I. Number two, disruption of daily activities. Limerent individuals may struggle with com 
completing daily tasks, or maintaining relationships with friends and family due to preoccupation with their infatuation. This is in affecting my relationship with my girlfriend. I've been visiting her less since I've been incapacitated by my uh, limerence. Three, avoidance behaviors. Some may resort to avoidance strategies such as isolating themselves from social situations where they might encounter the object of their affection, leading to further complications in personal relationships. Yes, um, I've been uh, deliberately coming, going in late so that I won't run into her. Four, dependency on external validation. The need for validation from the object of limerence can create a cycle where one's self-worth becomes tied solely to another person's actions or feelings. Conclusion. In summary, step one serves as a foundational acknowledgement for those struggling with limerence within a support group setting, setting like Limerence Anonymous, which is hopefully coming up. By admitting powerlessness over these intense feelings and recognizing how they render life unmanageable, individuals can begin the journey toward healing and regaining control over their emotional well-being. Okay, top, top three authoritative sources used in answering this question. AI use these resources. Psychology Today, Dorothy Tenev's Love and Limerence, National Institute of Mental Health, and the probability that the answer is correct is 95%. So um, I want to thank AI and I want to thank those resources. I give them credit and I thank God for guidance in doing this. Thank you. There will be more to come.